songs, toe tapping, hand clapping spirituals. Oh, it's a great, great morning, your first day in heaven when you stroll down the Golden Avenue. There are matches left and right, and you thrill every sight, and the saints are always smiling, saying, how do you do? On a hill far away. He is certainly the greatest gospel singer of this century. Many young people have dropped out of modern society because they feel it is too impersonal. Lately, many of them have sought to find the way through religion. Of all the things that have caught on among the young, this is perhaps the most unexpected. A prayer service and baptism by immersion on the Pacific at Santa Monica Beach. In recent years, the more experimental of America's young have gone through oriental religions and mysticism, long hair and offbeat clothing, drugs and sex. Now, in surprisingly large numbers, they're turning to Jesus. musicians that got born again and we're going to Calvary Chapel. We've been going there for about three weeks and we thought, man, our music would really be a good fit here. They don't have music like we play. We should find out if we can play here. On Sunday it was real traditional. It was the organ and the hymn. We went up to the secretary and we said, we've been Christians about three weeks and we want to play here. Can we meet with Pastor Chuck? So he said, well, why don't you guys play me a sample song? So we went out and got our guitars and we played a song called Welcome Back. Welcome Back! And the Holy Spirit really did fall, you know, that's the only way to describe it. And uh, his heart was touched. And the next thing we heard was, can you guys play tonight? Uh, Fred Field, our guitar player, is doing weekends in jail, uh, Orange County Jail on a marijuana bus, but he gets out at six o'clock, so I think we can make seven. And that's exactly what happened. We, within four months, there was about 2,000 people coming. The word spread like wildfire. That there was a hippie band, a hippie preacher. Larry Norman's Upon This Rock album was already out. It was on the Verve label. It was the one where he looks like he's in the rapture, he's flying through the clouds. All these bands began to emerge as they saw the example of what was happening with Love Song. So the first Maranoth album was born. A white album with a red dove on the front. Uh, ultimately wound up producing that album. I didn't start it, but I finished it. But as far as I know, that would be the second album ever made that was contemporary. The Love Song didn't come out till 72, we finally got we, we had two songs on the first Maranatha album, but we actually re-recorded them for our album, which is the Love Song album, which is right here. Little country church on the edge of town. This is bigger than a little country church. This is the story of Calvary and what's happening in the Jesus movement. Long hair, short hair, some coats and ties. And so then it got into, you know, long hair, short hair, some coats and ties. People finally coming around throughout the nation invited to an event called um, Expo 72 in Dallas, Texas. Well over 100,000 people there. We did our little hippie set, and um, right after we played, Billy Graham got up and spoke. And I really feel that was a defining moment in Christian music because to have Billy Graham come up after hippies played and preach to them was like a moment of truth. It was like, well, maybe if it's okay with Billy, it's okay with God. And I really, I, I consider that to be a tipping point where drums in church, guitars, that it could be used to communicate the gospel to a new generation. And I really do think that moment was a defining moment in contemporary Christian music. 